I'm enjoying my discussion this morning with you because I needed to listen to the progress of your work, especially in a mission which started more than 33 years ago, which we are today or this year, which we've been celebrating the 25th anniversary of Pakistan, of Sudan, of Bosnia, and Bangladesh, and Albania as well. As we remember, the first visit to Albania was in December 1991, soon after I, was, uh, I passed my MD degree in Birmingham University. I enjoyed what Ismail was talking to you about because I learned a lot from Ismail when I was working under him. This was 2004, alhamdulillah. I'm not a detailed man like all of you. I am a street worker who tried to find anything uh, on the road. I was thinking what to tell you. You read what I wrote here. It uh, might be meaningless to you. But for me, it's a meaningful. People who can divide people to five categories or four categories, people who are listening to the news, any ordinary individual can listen to the news. Even he or she might not understand the news. Second category, breaking, making, the, by making the news. I can make the news by having a cat which has got a two uh, tails or one tail and uh, three eyes or whatever it is. Okay? The third one, people who can break the news, making a, breaking the news, like actually what's happening now in America by this man who is a mass killer, called a mass killer, or actually the one who stabbed the young uh, Shia uh, boy in, in Birmingham uh, a few days ago, breaking the news. Okay? Or people who can institute the news. I don't want you to be one of the first three categories. No way. After 33 years, we'll be like anybody else. No way. Forget about it. You have to start and institute the news. As Amran was talking about, the institutional memory of the organization, which can make evidence-based news. And the last one, which I want you to be, is you make the news, which can make the change. You can't make the news, which can make the change, unless you institute it. And you have a very strong research department and spend money on research. As this is one of the most important weaknesses in most of the Muslim charities or the Arab charities or the third world charities or the church from the south globally. Because the donor in this area does not pay money for research, for capacity building. I was very happy to listen to you talking about localism. Something was a dream. Because when we went to Sudan first time, 2003, myself did not know that Sudan was two Sudans. I thought I can go to Khartoum and from Khartoum I can jump on a plane to Juba. They told me you have to go to Nivasha in Kenya, and from Nivasha you take a, go to Lokochokyo, and from Lokochokyo charter a plane to go to uh, Juba and the other places in the, in, in the south. Okay? So this is where uh, we were uh, to, to look at the south. This actually, your role now as Islamic Relief, as a family council, is the last two in instituting the news and make your news to be the change maker. This is, number, the first, this is the first slide. I have another slide. Second one, Brother Muhammad. Send what? This is our role. Because you're talking about a lot of detailed discussion points. It was music for my ear. Because some of them were dreams 10, 15 years ago. But now it becomes a reality. It doesn't have to be your dream have to become a reality on the same day because you're not a prophet. You're not a messenger of God. The only one have this Maybe he has the dream in the evening, he see it happen in the morning, is the prophets and the messengers of God. Send what? The first point is send the message of the people to humanity. You are about the people, which is localism. You are talking about localism. Send the message. Transfer the message. Send it effectively to humanity. Then what you need, you know, after knowing the message, what the people want to design their program according to their needs. So here we are people driven. Here we are 
who are needs driven. You send their message, design the program that they want, then produce the product that they need. You can have the best product ever, but you don't want it. It's not good for my community. It's not good for my uh, uh, people. It's not good for this zone. Like somebody came from a very hot country and were giving us a gift uh, of something to cover the, uh, the, the windscreen of the car during sun. Uh, was it so, and there's about 45 or 50 degrees. Here there's no 45 degree, So that does not suit us. It suits uh, another country. So produce the product that they need. And alhamdulillah that you were talking about localism this morning. And UN WHS Summit last year was talking about localism or localization as one of the products. Meet what? Meet their needs. So coming back to the first one, them, their, their. Meet their needs. Then if you are successful, you will satisfy the customer. Who is the customer? As well as the owner is the people that you are serving. The customer and the owner are the people that deserve. Then measure the impact of what you have on the community. Measuring impact now is not everybody can do it or is doing it. How can we measure the impact of digging a well or making a product here and there on the community? Actually, this is actually, so if we look at this five or six point, or six point, six point, and the other ones, so what we want from you to institute the news and to make the news that can make the change, then to respond to the, on the other side will be the people that we serve and do claim that we are serving. That's why when we talk about with, with, with Imran about uh, the, the first f uh, uh, camps we have done in, in, for Kosovo in 1999, Imran? 1999 in Skodra. In April, in April. 99, 99, between, between April and uh, 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 September, October. And, uh, yeah. and if, we, if we look at this, there was a great need of 900,000 people which should drive or drove Islam. I didn't want to talk too much because Nasser said maximum 15 minutes and he would like to have a question and answer session in the, in the 15 minutes. Is that right? I stop now. But these two slides is my dream yesterday and my thoughts when I was having my, uh, my shower <laughs> this morning. Nasser. Yes, brother. How do you see now from when Islam really was born until... I think I was very happy that Nasser and you were discussing the uh, waqf has become an organization now. The microfinance become an organization now. Okay, there was a, there was a dream by somebody, Nasser knows uh, him or them, uh, more than 12 years ago. Even Academy was another dream, Nasser knows about it. But if it takes about 10 to 15 years to be implemented, you should not become frustrated. You should be enjoying or enjoying yourself when it becomes a reality after 10 or 15 years. I'm very happy to listen to these three uh, uh, project, which was ideas 12, 15 years ago, but now becomes reality as a structured organization. In some countries, there are some like currently extremely negative movement or media movement against Islamic Relief. Mm. What can you comment? This is what we have been doing with Islamic Relief. Uh, maybe Nasser, the, Nasser and Amran were actually, and uh, Jamal were the people who were with Islamic Relief long time ago. We have communication with everybody and anybody on the globe. Governments, officers, government leaders, kings, queens, ministers, mail shot. At least twice a year. This from the president's office. Then we used to attend all the big meetings. We have external relations unit, which are attending most of the meetings. In the first few years, we did not actually deliver messages. We were learning what was happening, what was being said in these conferences. Then they start to invite us from the embassies, from the institution, start to make friends. If you keep building this relationship and make friends, this will actually protect you against any media attack. It's number one. Number two, open door policy. Open door policy of Islamic Relief 
It started from 1991. So not 1991. Yeah, from 1991 and from the war in Bosnia. This was 10 years before September 11, 2001. You actually think ahead. Jamal? Technical question. Difference between design and produce. You design the program. program. That actually produced the product. Okay. You say they designed the program to produce the product. Yes, sir. Who's the customer? Is it only the beneficiary? Or can it be the beneficiary and the donor at the same time? My first, I'm not going to call them customer because it might be insult to the people who pay my salary. The people who pay my salary are the people in Pakistan, in South Sudan, in this country. This is not priority number one. If you satisfy their needs, definitely the donors will be happy with you. Don't be a donor driven. Because if I give you the example of what has been happening with the Syrian organization in, in Turkey and the others, Every other day, a donor from certain countries wake up in the morning and say, you go and do this project for me. They said, we don't want to do it because it's, it's, it's not relevant to what the people need inside Syria or what the people need inside this country. And actually, they, but they have to take the money from the donor. You know why? To take the admin cost for the operation. So try to educate the donor and tell the donor that actually the first need to be met is the people's need which is actually the people who are paying our salaries. I already uh, asked okay. a question, I but, but I, uh, another question. Doctor, you want us to be proactive and not... Uh, 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 Reactive. Yeah, yes, for the last two uh, point institution news. But how can we do this, this uh, knowing that there is a gap between um, the capacity of all offices, all of yeah. number of Islamic relief. Family. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think for this proactivity is the central office has to receive all the information. As as Ismail was talking about it before 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 that, and from there, actually, if you don't have a capacity, either the central office will be able to build your capacity or one of the other strong offices in the organization will be able to build the capacity of actually the small organization. But actually, dissemination of information and management of the information in the, by, the, by the headquarters and redisseminating of the information, another uh, uh, again, is one of the capacity-building process of helping these small and startup uh, uh, offices, which you, which you have. Building the capacity of offices not only need money, it needs information sharing. It needs experience sharing. Okay. Salah. Salah. Oh, sorry. What are the key ingredients you feel that are needed in individuals who are part of uh, the leadership? The individual. Individuals in humanitarian sector leadership. Uh, he has to be a messenger, not an employee. Messengers mean that there's no time limit, there's no offer limit, there's no, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, there's no limit for his time scale. But this, uh, to, to try to protect the family, is at the time of crisis, especially if we're talking about time of crisis of what's happening in Myanmar, what's happening in Syria, what's other, if there's a big crisis happening there, don't come and tell me that I work nine to five. It's out of my question, out of my job description. Don't come and tell me that actually it's Saturday or Sunday. I'm not, say, I'm not saying this for the 24, no, how, many, how many months in the year? 24 or 15? <laughs> 19 months. 19 months. <laughs> 13, oh, Ethiopia 13. No. Why is his, they are took the independence from Ethiopia. <laughs> uh, so at the time of crisis, put the priority of the people who actually, that who are claiming that are their champion for this period, at least. Okay? This, this is what we need from the individual. And this cannot be happening unless you yourself bring up the leadership from within the organization. If you get ready-made people who are coming from outside with different culture, they might pull you back. So the challenge on somebody like Nasser and the institution here is to keep building up the leadership from within the organization. When they were young officers, becoming junior manager, then become uh, uh, senior directors, and they have to earn this from what? From exposing them as much as you can by visit, letting them to visit the field or seconding them 
to the field. To understand the mechanics of the desire of the, not the, the mechanics of the need and the agony of the people in the field. Uh, are you allowed to talk to your chairman? <laughs> and, and you can tell him off. <laughs> when does the model we have become, um, with all the attacks following up on Mahmoud's uh, goal, when do we have to change our approach to the service we're providing to humanity? You don't have to change the service. You have to protect yourself while you're still delivering. Don't stop delivering. One of the most important challenges you have to deliver, whether you are having a honeymoon with the media or the media is attacking you. No, no, it's, a, it's a non-stop mission. But while you are going to this, through this difficult time, you have to learn to bring with you a lot of committed individuals that they can protect you. And this is what happened in the USA a, few, a month ago or two months ago. The people who defended Islamic Leaf USA before the Senate and, and the Congress yeah, were about 50 organizations. Those 50 organizations were, did not, were not actually uh, يعني, tick boxes. They have been building the relation with them for the last maybe 5, 10 years. The same was actually Islamic Leaf at the Afghan war at the time of 2000-2001. The relationship between Islamic Leaf UK and Islamic Leaf and, and, the, and the British government and the others after September 11 was very strong and transparent. That's why Islamic Leaf ship did not sink after 2001 in America. Why? Because we have been opening the doors, as I mentioned earlier, in, in 19... Nowadays, keep building the relationship on two levels, with the grassroots community, and as we discussed it in Canada, which was you, well, not in Canada, uh, with you on the phone, grassroots does not only stop at the community level. It goes nowadays at Savannah height. You know, Savannah and the central, and the equatorium, Savannah could be two, three meters high. It goes to the, the PM office. Our grassroots in the good old days, because the climate, the political climate and the security climate was different, was to the grassroots level. But now our grass has to rise to the PM office. Okay? This is very important. Plus, it's keep, 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 keep strengthening your relationship with the local organization from your ethnic backgrounds as well as the local organization from the other backgrounds, as well as the government offices. Because you are accountable to the donors, to the people, and to the government as well. So, uh, as maybe a lot of people here are facing inside the day-to-day -day, uh, operation, and because of the ready-made recruitment policy in Islamic Relief, uh, some of the challenges come out from uh, a few years ago, which is the bad competition between the staff and trying to grill the stages and the levels. Mm. So you are here and tomorrow you are here. That created inside this family sort of a non satisfied environment or atmosphere. How do you think? CDs or CEOs can tackle that uh, challenge? I think if, if, you, if you have a good a junior staff who in five or ten years' time will not find the space for them in the directorship, they will leave. And this will actually have to have a flexible structure in the organization. And senior leadership in the organization does not have to be in the HQ. It has to be anywhere else. Sometimes you might be able to accommodate all the juniors. Sometimes you might not be able to accommodate all the juniors. Because some of them now, if you look at Islamic Leaf as an, an institution who produced the leaders that they are working in other organizations, senior ones like in United Nations, other organizations like mentioned before, you have to be cre uh, credited to the number of people who are qualified from Islamic Leaf and working in different institutions. So it's either internally, okay, by having flexible structure, and this to be discussed with with Nasser and the board, how can we let those young, zealous individuals see a future for themselves and inside the organization? Or you prepare them, actually, as a leader, so they can be picked up by other organizations, and they'll be the ambassadors in the other organization. And be very, 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 very positive. Those people who left the Islamic Reform work for other organizations are very good, positive, strong ambassadors for Islamic Relief. 
So you have to look at both of them in a positive way. And I mean, already made people coming to Islamic yeah. without the vision, yeah. without spirit. The spirit. The spirit yeah. of, of the mission. Sometimes they have yeah. the operation. Yeah. And I, I will witness something that we are facing. Someone come from outside, straight away, RDC in the IPD. Hmm. And when there is something happening, like whatever is happening now, campaigns, etc., high emergency, and that you are burning here, and people dealing with the information are very quiet, taking it easy. So when you ask for a proposal to run to meet a donor in 24 hours to get a million, for him, is a matter of process because he he did not come from that grassroots that it gives him the thinking that oh no these people they need it because we need yeah. money for the beneficiaries yeah so the model that we have in Islamic today this is one of the big challenges that yeah. we have. this is a big challenge in most of the organization but your bigger challenge which you discussed it with Nasser maybe you remember 2004-2005 with something called future leadership, okay? Is you start to make your, you have to live with those people nowadays, خلاص. You can't uh, live without them because you don't have a qualified staff in the leadership level. But you have to start building it on, from the junior staff inside the organization. And this should be a big part of the academy, Islamic Leaf Academy, actually, to start to train this young leadership and you, as senior leaders in the organization, have to start build this leadership from within. This might take about five years, Brother Tariq, or more, as, as Brother Nasser might, might tell you. But uh, it's a process. It will take time. But actually, at the meantime, you have to manage with those ready-made managers or directors who come to you and to minimize the risk of not having the spirit and all this sort of thing that negative you are talking about. But you have to come back to the ultimate solution is to build your leadership from within the organization, whether they're male or female. Any other questions? Okay. Can we give you one minute for okay. concluding statement? Oh, uh, my concluding statement is, um, uh, since I left the Islamic Reef, alhamdulillah, I did not leave the Islamic Reef because all the information came back to me in and out. <laughs> By my own spies. You see, a spy one, spy two, spy three, spy four, spicy girls and spicy boys. <laughs> and uh, uh, I feel strongly that you are on the right track because you are talking, you are transforming and transforming Islamically from uh, the stage of the founders stage, which is all excitement and strong spirit and heavyweight driving forces into the institutional stage. And now it's very difficult to go through the bureaucracy of an institutional stage to become an institution that nobody can shake you. The more knockout you take and stand up again, the more stronger you become. And now we have been taking uh, quite a few, not a knockout, just a scratch at the back of mine. Because I'm a dinosaur, scratch my back. Yeah, this was his stab, but this scr scratch my skin. So what happened to Islamic Leaf here and there and here and there, it is something needed to be happened by others. Because what? Because there's a lot of enemies of success. In an era of Islamophobia, in an era of counter-extremism, counter-terrorism, which is, they link it to Islam and whatever you call it. Okay? It's nothing to do with us. We have a mission. Huh? to accomplish and to have a message to deliver and to have a product to produce and are going to meet the needs of the people. And they're going to do it. Whether you scratch my back with a knife, you scratch my back with a bullet, you scratch my back with whatever it is, with bad mouthing, I have a mission and the Islamic Leaf is having a mission and I'm very, very happy that you people are talking about something at a higher level and you're ahead of the time of other organizations and meeting with the international agencies who have been started maybe 50 years before you, and you'll be ahead of them. Because I remember one day, I think who told me, Wasim Yaqub, long time ago, told me in the FCO, they thought that the growth rate of Islamic Reef in the 90s were actually beyond 
their expectation. And now you are beyond the expectation of the people who are actually backbiting you, making a bad news about you, and trying to stab you and to bring this organization down. Welcome to the success story of Islamic Leaf. And I'm celebrating your success story. Alhamdulillah. And I, let me to, to, to finish with saying something in the last 10 seconds of the one minute, which the one was gone two minutes ago, actually. <laughs> the creation of Islamic Leaf was two organizations. It was Muslim Child's Forum, which you created it when I was there inside Islamic Leaf, and the Humanitarian Forum. Were, were created at the back yard of Islamic Leaf. They're still viable 10 years down the road. And even here, my Muslim Child's Forum is organizing the first WAF, World Humanitarian Action Forum, in, in November, which you are supporting, alhamdulillah, uh, Canada is supporting, uh, Germany is supporting, UK is supporting, and we're still waiting for USA. But we are inviting you to come to the success story for one of your initiatives, which came from your backyard 10 years ago. Okay? And this actually to conclude, because you are a man of a mission, an organization of a mission, and have a missions, message to deliver and the product to deliver as well, uh, you are succeeding. And don't worry, don't worry about people who keep saying bad things about yourself. Keep opening it up and keep strengthening the structure from inside and Allah will support and make you more successful, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.